and welcome to our first teen summer reading STEM program for Tales for Tales. Today we are going down to the microscopic level of our animals and looking at animal cells. And we're also going to be making a rice crispy and candy model of the animal cells. So an animal cell is the basic unit of life for organisms in the kingdom Animalia. They carry out the different functions with structures called organelles, which are going to be made up of all of our candy. So let's get started. All right, so in your kit, you will have a rounded Rice Krispie, and then all of these different candies, which will make up the different organelles of our cell. So we'll go over which one is which as we're putting them on our um, main cell or cell membrane that'll be made out of our large Rice Krispie bar. And you'll also have some sparkle gel icing that we will use for our cytoplasm. So animal cells are multicellular, meaning that multiple cells work together to form the whole organism. In complex organisms such as humans, these cells can be highly spe specialized and perform different functions. And while they'll look a little bit different from animal to animal, they have these main core organelles. So we'll start with first our plasma membrane or cell membrane made out of our Rice Krispie Treat. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is the nucleus, which will be a smaller Rice Krispie treat that is colored into either probably blue or purple in your kit. And the nucleus is not suspended in the cytoplasm, so we'll put our nucleus down first. And you'll have a um, chart here in your kit that you can work off as well. So the nucleus contains all the genetic material of the cell and the genetic information, the DNA, contains the instructions for making the proteins which control all of the body's activities. Inside the nucleus, there is a separate subsection called the nucleolus, which you will use as um, the single gumball. There are other gumballs in your kit, but this will be the only one of its color. It'll be purple, blue, whichever, but if it's the only gumball of its color, that's what we, you will use as the nucleolus. And it is like a nucleus inside the nucleus that controls the ribosome synthesis um, and separates it from the rest of the cell in its nuclear envelope. The next thing we'll talk about and put on our um, cell model is the cytoplasm or the cytosol. So you'll use icing for your cytosol, and this is the gel-like liquid within cells that suspends all of the organelles except for the nucleus and nucleolus within it. So collectively referred to, all of the organelles and the cytosol are called the cytoplasm. So we're gonna put our cytosol down just as a layer all over before we put our organelles down. And I'm leaving a little bit of a rim around side that shows that plasma membrane here. So we'll fit all of our organelles within the icing or cytosol. There we go. And you can use as much icing as you want as long as you have a good layer. So going back, we will talk about the endoplasmic reticulum. So the endoplasmic reticulum, we are going to be using our um, airheads for because it is a network of flattened membrane bound sacs that are involved in the production processing and transport of proteins um, in and out of your cell that are that have been synthesized by ribosomes which we talked to come from the nucleolus so the endoplasmic reticulum is like the assembly line of the cell where products are produced um, by the ribosomes are processed and assembled so what we'll do there is if you look on your chart or your graph, or no, it's not a graph, but if you look on your example, the endoplasmic reticulum is folded around the nucleolus, or the nucleus, so that's what we're gonna do with our airheads, is we'll just kind of place them around in a folded pattern, kind of into our cytoplasm, it'll stick nicely. So I'm just gonna pre-fold this one here and just set it down into our icing. There we go. 
it might fold out a little bit, but we're good. All right, from the endoplasmic reticulum, we will move on to the Gogli apparatus, which is another organelle. It's also called the Gogli complex or the Gogli body. And the candy you'll use for that are these gummy worms. So the Gogli apparatus um, receives the proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum, folds, sorts, and packages these proteins into the vesicles. Um, so the Gogli apparatus is like the shipping department of the cell. And so if you can keep going back to that main picture, the Gogli apparatus is kind of off the side of the endoplasmic reticulum, receiving all of those proteins to ship them out. So you can use your gummy worms. I'm only going to use the two. From there, we will go to our ribosomes. So the ribosomes are what synthesize those proteins that get shipped down the endoplasmic reticulum into the Gogli apparatus. And we're going to be using our nerds. So the ribosomes are found in both animal and plant cells. They are like mini machines that synthesize all of the proteins in the cell. So in any animal cell, there can be as many as 10 million ribosomes. So they are the manufacturing department. So you can just put these all over your cytoplasm because there can be as many as 10 million, which is why we're using nerds because there's so many of them. So we'll just throw those throughout. Our reticulum is folding out here. That's fine. All right. And the Goglio apparatus will give those proteins, the synthesized, shipped, and packaged up to what is called a lysosome, which is a type of vesicle. Vesicles are spheres surrounded by a membrane, and we're going to be using the Twizzlers, which aren't quite spheres, but we'll extend our imagination here for a second. Um, and they will, um, they have a membrane surrounded that excludes their contents from the rest of the cytoplasm and are used extensively within the cell for metabolism and transport of large molecules. So you can go ahead and put those just throughout because they're transporting all of those synthesized proteins. The next is mitochondria, which if you've are, um, ever been in a biology class before, you've probably heard this, but the mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the cell. It um, contains the process of cellular respiration that occurs, and during that process, sugars and fats are broken down through a sort of chemical reaction, releasing energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. ATP is like the energy currency of the cell, um, and it can be used to power various cellular processes. And today, for our mitochondria, we are using jelly beans. So we'll just put those throughout our cell as well. We've already talked about cytoplasm. So other things that make up the cell's structure are cytoskeletons, which are um, a network of filaments and tubes throughout the cytoplasm that gives the cell shape, strength, and stabilization. And for those, as they're um, sprinkled through, we're actually going to use the rainbow sprinkles. So flipping back to our diagram, we have a couple other things to use for our candies. So we have some Mike and Ikes that are centrosomes that help um, give information and throughout the cell. So we'll use our Mike and Ikes for those. And the last thing we have are the peroxisomes, which are another one of those information storing organelles of our animal cell. And there you have it. Obviously, it looks exactly like it. But here is our diagram of an animal cell and our own candy model. I hope you had fun with this program and we'll be right back. Thank you so much for being a part of this program. I hope you enjoyed it and we learned a lot. Enjoy your awesome candy model, which you can now go ahead and take apart and eat unless you want to save it for some reason or show somebody. Um, and make sure to sign up for the rest of our programs for teen summer reading at hastingslibrary.us and we'll see you next week for our DIY dinosaur skeleton with the Pixel Lab.